Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, we are recording. This is another episode of The Talking Head in the car at night with the extremely bright light. But uh, yeah, that thing is a little too bright. Oh, it's on idiot mode now. Let's get it adjusted. <laughs> but uh, a friend of mine told me to get some vinyl to put over that, so I think I'm going to do that tomorrow. Because that thing's like looking into the high noon sun. But uh, I wanted to start this video off by plugging my Patreon account. For those who don't know what Patreon is, it's basically a website where content creators can provide um, private material for people who pay monthly for that private material. And over at my Patreon page, we've got some people on board. I've been producing a ton of content. Um, and some good discussions have already been brought up. And... Uh, so for people who are interested in donating, donating to my channel or just want to pay to get bonus material, I'd rather have you guys donate to my Patreon page because then you'll get some, uh, some content back. I do have a donation option on my website. And uh, so I think I'm going to close that down and just make my primary donation um, outlet my Patreon page. Because when someone donates like 60 bucks to me, and I don't really have anything to give them back. It, it does kind of feel, I don't know, it's kind of hard to explain how it feels. But anyways, you can find that website at www.patreon.com slash sacred serpent. You can also click the link above my hands, copy and paste that, put it into your URL bar, and press enter. And it's $5 a month. Um, but, you know, this is going to be a public video. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about drunk driving and the fact that uh, I know a lot of people who do this shit regularly and uh, you're just being nothing more than an idiot if you are a drunk driver and you think that uh, it's not going to lead you anywhere or if, if you think it's going to lead you to anywhere else other than a jail, jail cell or you know just financially broke because DUIs are expensive. Um, I know so many people who have DUIs... Um, and, you know, I'm not bashing people. I mean, we all make mistakes, but not too long ago, a friend of mine had one of his friends killed by a drunk driver, and the dude that was killed was like 22 years old, all because some clown wanted to get into a vehicle after he drank and uh, navigate through the Matrix. And uh, what's interesting, it's not interesting, it's, it's unfortunate that usually all the people die in a drunk driving accident other than the person who was drunk. So, I mean, imagine killing someone because you weren't smart enough to, to get sober first before you got into your car. Imagine what it must feel like to have killed one or more people um, and now you have to sit in your jail cell the rest of your life contemplating, the, you know, just thinking about that and dwelling on that. I mean, that's got to be the most... That, that's a, a quintessential hell to be stuck in a prison cell Acknowledging the fact that you uh, killed people, or one or more people. Usually there's more than one. It's it's strange that usually the, the drunk driver is usually the person who lives. They'll get like a, a broken bone or like a, a cut on their cheek or something just silly. Something stupid. Meanwhile, the innocent people in the car are now gone. So it amazes me that alcohol is actually legal. Um... And it amazes me that some of these really profound um, sacraments and different beneficial things are e illegal. So we live in a world where things are kind of flipped upside down and backwards. And a lot of times, I, I, it's just but people bitch all the time about drunk drivers and drunk, drunk related accidents, but this shit's legal. So I don't know. I think that there should be some mandatory device that's built in these vehicles other than a breathalyzer that can actually scan your blood alcohol content before you get into the car. And you know, I, I've heard of breathalyzers, um, I've actually seen them in the past, and the thing about a breathalyzer is that the person in the passenger seat can blow through it who's sober. So there's got to be some way where we can design vehicles with some type of smart technology where the vehicle actually can judge whether a person's fit to drive or not, because, my God. So yeah, a message to you drunk drivers. If you currently 
are an alcoholic or if you currently drink and you drive and you think that uh, all is well, just know that uh, this happens very often and it's always by people who didn't expect it to happen. That's, a, that's the dangerous thing about alcohol is with alcohol, the, the, the bad things that happen with alcohol related bullshit, it's always happened to someone who didn't expect it to happen. A lot of people have the this mentality that, uh, oh, that could never happen to me. You know, I'm just going to the store. I'll be back really quick. <laughs> a lot of drunk driving related accidents and deaths are within five miles of someone's home. So, I mean, just you, you had a couple tall boys, you, you drank a few uh, whiskey on the rocks, whatever your drink is, and then you, you get in the car to go get a pack of cigarettes or something and you're too drunk and you fucking accidentally kill a kid or something and you run someone over. Is that worth it? Get some shoes on and fucking walk. So I believe there are still states where you can drink and drive, not illegally drink and drive. You can't have your blood alcohol content over a certain percentage, but you can have like open containers in the car. It's just stupid shit. I mean, come on. <laughs> Meanwhile, beneficial, beneficial forms of cannabis are illegal to use, but uh, it's legal to use alcohol. And you can go to the, the gas station where you fill your vehicle up with gas and buy your booze. So, you know, you, being a drunk driver, you could be drunk while you drive to the gas station, then go get more beer. The place where you're supposed to fill your vehicle up with, with fuel and be a responsible driver, you can get uh, your alcohol. Any little fix you need, you can find at the gas station. It's pathetic. <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, you, you, drunk drivers, you, you're being nothing more than a fool. And if you don't stop now, chances are you'll either get a DUI or you'll hurt yourself or someone else. And I can't imagine what it would be like to be drunk one night and then waking up in a prison cell the next morning as your fucking drunk wears off, realizing that, holy shit, I killed people. Not only does it hurt you, it hurts the family of the people that you killed. It ruins people's hearts, losing their, their child or their friend, whatever. All for some booze. And on top of that, it ruins your, it ruins your image and it ruins, it, it just puts a lot of fucking negativity on your family and you get a nice big old scarlet letter. So, I mean, holy shit. It blows my mind that alcohol is illegal. Now, you might be thinking, oh, but this is, that would be kind of silly to make alcohol illegal. Some people just like to drink responsibly. Well, so many other things have been made illegal that don't do anywhere near the amount of damage that alcohol has. So... I mean, we live in a culture, you guys, that venerates alcoholism to the utmost degree. We live in a culture where alcohol is actually viewed as, it, it's a socially acceptable addiction, a drug, nothing more than a drug. And alcohol is a depressant. It will ruin your life if you start drinking every day like I used to. I was the worst form of alcohol that there was. I was a raging alcoholic. I would drink upwards of a half a gallon of vodka a night. I blew all of my money on uh, when, when I'd get a paycheck, I'd blow all my money on booze. I'd spend half of my paycheck on expensive absinthe. And absinthe is a hallucinogenic form of alcohol. And I would just, my whole life revolved around a, a, an alcohol bottle. And what's, what was frightening to me is that at the time, I actually justified this shit. I thought, it, I thought there was kind of like this poetic aspect of my alcoholism. Like... I was designed to be like, it was part of my life. I needed to do this. So I'm an alcoholic and poor me, poor me. Fuck that shit. No one needs to drink. No one needs to do any of this shit. It's your addiction that's driving you insane. And it's the parasites connected to your addiction as well. You're not just feeding your, you're not just drinking alcohol because you like the taste of it. And you're not just drinking alcohol because you like the way it makes you feel or that it's a social lubricant. No, there's a parasitic aspect to this as well. But the very fact that people drink alcohol because it's a social lubricant means that people can't live in reality and that people need to drink something or consume, consume something 
to deal with something here in this matrix. So, oh, I drink because it relieves stress. I drink because I like the way it makes me feel. I drink because I like the way it tastes. I can't go to this party without alcohol. I'll be looked at like a, like I'm weird. Well, why would you want to be somewhere in the first place that if you don't have an alcoholic beverage in your hand, people are going to try to force you to drink? Or, oh, what, what are you, sober now? What the fuck, man? YOLO. You only live once. Live fast, die young. Drink this disgusting alcohol made with fluoridated water and a bunch of genetically modified ingredients. I know so many people who love health and so many people who are interested in health and speak out against GMOs and all the insanity of the, the food system, but they'll drink a six pack of fucking dirty, fluoridated, generic, genetically modified beer. So, I mean, all the power to you if you're a responsible drinker. And a lot of people are. Uh, people in my family can drink one beer and be done. But when I was drinking, I had to have the 12 pack an entire 12 pack then I'd have to go walk down to the liquor store and get a pint of vodka and just uh, roam around the roam around the earth in a drunken stupor feeling sorry for myself it's all fun and games until something serious happens and you're forced to either quit or go to go to jail or you know this and that so man there were so many nights where I'd go to a bar with my wallet and there'd be like $300 in my wallet. And then I would go to the liquor store the next day without looking in my wallet and go to pay and all the money was gone. All of it. So then I'd go home and... <laughs> uh, due to that... How would I say that? Let's see. Let's get a sip of water. <laughs> Another alcohol rant. I talk about alcohol and alcoholism because I want to try to help people who are struggling with what I once went through. Back then, if someone asked me, hey, are you a Democrat? Are you a, a Republican? Uh, you know, are you a uh, construction worker? No, I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> I'm a full-time alcoholic. <laughs> But um, regarding the money thing, I mean, I'd go to pay for my alcohol after I went to the bar, or excuse me, the night before, <laughs> let's rephrase this, I'd go to a bar with like $300 in my pocket, okay? I'd go home, wake up the next morning, still kind of drunk, wouldn't look in my wallet thinking that I had money in it, and then go to pay for my my. Uh, my fifth or my my handle of vodka and there would be no money in my wallet so uh, then I'd check my pockets I'd go home look and look around no it was gone I don't know what the fuck I spent my money on what I did with it I don't know if I gave it to people there were so many stupid times where I would just do st stupid shit with my money when I was drunk excuse my language I'm trying to get better with that <laughs> but uh, but you know instead of going okay I'm, I'm, I'm fucking, there's the language again. Instead of going, okay, I'm ruining my life with alcohol. I'm losing my money. I don't know where my money is. I'm all disorganized. Instead of sitting down and going, okay, I'll strategize a way to quit. I won't drink tonight. No, I'd go home and I'd look through all of my change containers. I'd find some quarters, some dimes, some nickels, and occasionally some pennies. And I'd go down to the liquor store and I'd buy my vodka with change. That's like when you know the person that you're buying your that's selling you the alcohol knows you're a fucking just a total drunk. Um, here's another story. There was a period where I had lost my wallet when I was drunk, and I didn't have an ID, so I couldn't just go anywhere and buy alcohol. When I was an alcoholic, I looked a lot younger, and oftentimes people would, would ask me for my ID. So there was only like one or two places where I could buy my alcohol because the people knew me and knew I was over 21. And it got to a point where I would go every night to the same liquor store down the street and buy a fifth to a handle of either vodka or brandy every night. And it got to a point where when I would walk in, they may have not noticed that I noticed them, but the employees would look at each other because this is a small liquor store and just be totally confused. They knew I was an alcoholic. And uh, 
you know, I knew the owner and not too long ago, I actually ran into the owner, um, of that liquor store. And, uh, <laughs> I was walking down the alcohol aisle to go to the back of the store to get some almond milk or some soy milk, one of the two. And she ran into me in the liquor store, or excuse me, in the, in the liquor aisle and was like, Oh, I haven't seen you in a long time. Uh, where have you been? And I told her, I, you know, I quit drinking, but she kind of looked at me in a, a weird way because I was in the alcohol aisle. And what are the chances of a guy that used to buy a fifth to a handle of vodka every night from, from me? Or excuse me, she would, I would, she would sell me a fifth to a, a handle, her, her or her husband, I can't speak tonight, every night for months and months and months. And, uh, I, you know, she just looked at me weird because, oh, you're quitting, you quit drinking alcohol, but you're in the alcohol aisle. It's just something that I could see would be hard to believe after you've sold someone gallon after gallon of, of alcohol. <laughs> but anyways, I've, I've talked to them since they know I've quit, but, uh, it feels so good to be off the bottle. I'm going to continue making the alcohol videos because I know people can benefit from these videos. Some of the most rewarding comments that I've got comments and messages, private messages from people here on YouTube, um, about my channel are related to alcohol. So there's been a large handful of people who have actually quit because of my alcohol videos. And that makes me feel really good because I know what it's like to struggle with alcohol and I know how much better it feels to not drink at all. So I think a lot of alcoholics get into this ideology of, okay, you know, I'll just keep it under control. No, if you could keep it un under control, you wouldn't be at the point you're at in life right now. No. And the whole concept of keeping it under control, that's a very dangerous road to walk down, ladies and gentlemen. If you love alcohol, if you love getting drunk, if you seem to not be able to live without it, you trying to control your consumption will most likely lead to more consumption. Because once you get drunk, you lose your inhibitions. You lose your ability to say no to a large extent because everything just feels warmer. Everything feels easier. Oh, I'll just let it go and have another drink. That's the type of shit that I can't stand about alcohol. There's my mouth again. I cannot stand how it inspires people to let go of... Uh, in, <laughs> People get this ideology, this, this, this state of mind when they're drinking that, oh, I'll just let go and have fun. Life's stressful. I need to just let go and drink, you know, oh, YOLO. You need to let go of letting go. Letting go can be a good thing to some extent. Letting go of like, you know, your stress or letting go of, of things that are just destroying you mentally or, you know, baggage from certain things or... But when it comes to alcohol, oh, you know, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get sober. I'm trying to cut back on my alcohol, but I'm just going to let go because it's Friday. I'm with the homies. I'm just going to let go. <clears throat> that leads you to nowhere. And I don't know one alcoholic that doesn't deeply within his or her heart want to quit. So why not just do it? You're going to have to do it someday. Why wait? If you wait, you're going to get to the point where chances are you might get yourself into a lot of trouble. I know a lot of really nice people who got behind a wheel and got themselves into a lot of trouble when they were drinking. So one night I was driving home and some dude I knew, his car was in someone's front yard in the bushes upside down. And he's standing there with the cops getting arrested. And it's like, dude, was that really worth it? Was that little glass bottle filled with toxic fucking alcohol really worth it? There's my mouth again. But this, this, this drinking stuff really is pushed on you in high school heavily. Um, so I remember the first night I got drunk with my friends in high school, just remembering the taste of just tasting it like, holy crap, how does anyone drink this stuff? And we would like hold our noses and drink the, drink the beer or the wine. I think we were drinking wine that night. Um, 
<laughs> but you know, over time, you you fall in love with the taste of it because your body gets accustomed to it, your taste buds do, and deep down, you really like enjoying it, the taste of it, because it gets you drunk. You think a heroin addict, how would I put it this way? How would I put this, excuse me? You think a heroin addict addict gives a shit that he has to poke his, his, his veins? The pain from poking his veins? No, because he knows that he's about to feel total euphoria. The same goes with alcohol. You actually start to enjoy the taste of it because it gets you drunk. Anyways. Other nighttime video in the car about alcohol. I like the nighttime videos because occasionally I'll catch a uh, occasional orb on camera. One more sip. But this whole thing of water right now, if I filled it to the top, that would be how much vodka I drank in two days. <laughs> so I don't drink alcohol anymore. I drink water, tea, some a little bit of coffee, and um, carbonated water. Carbonated water is my new beer. So every time I get a craving for carbonated water, even though I know carbonated water isn't the greatest beverage, I remind myself of where I was years ago when I was drinking alcohol every day. And I go, okay, that's not too bad. You, you've got to learn to reward yourself. You've got to learn to let go a little bit of rigidity when it comes to, you know, after you've quit and once you've been long, once you've been sober long enough, you, you know, you can, you got to find ways to um, keep, not only keep your mind preoccupied, but just remain emotionally satiated. And for me, that's carbonated water. I love it. Um, although I try not to drink too much of it. Lately, I've been drinking quite a bit of it. A little, a little too much, but that's okay. Because I look back at where I was when I was... I mean, my brother, my brother brews homemade beer. And this is how much of a loser I was. He brewed a batch of beer for my one of my neighbors who paid for all the ingredients. This, this was a lengthy process. It's not like making jello where you just add the ingredients and overnight you have jello. No, you have to, you have to boil a bunch of stuff and filter stuff and you got to let it ferment and you got to do a bunch of stuff. Once that beer got close to being ready to drink, because it does have to sit a while, every night I would go out into the garage with a, a jug and fill up his beer and drink it and get drunk off of it. And it's just like, there's so many things that I did when I was drunk that it's just like, dude, it, it's, it's inspired me to become a diff completely different person because I don't want to be that reflection of my old self. No, I don't, I don't want to have morals of a junkie or an addiction, an addicted person. Absolutely not. So let's check and see what time it is really quick. My phone is dead. So we'll wrap this one up in a few minutes. Um, we are at 23 minutes. Okay. We'll go a little bit longer. So, I mean, everyone has their drunken moments where the night or the day after they drank, they regret doing stuff that they've done. I mean, I've broken into tears and like cried in front of people and like, just like, um, what were some of the other things? Broken people's shit, uh, hum, and not had the money to pay for it. Um, hmm. But yeah, you've got to remember that the longer you remain on alcohol, the longer the are the harder it's going to be for you to get sober especially if you're a full-blown alcoholic. You'll know you're a full-blown alcoholic if you can't go 24 hours without alcohol without having withdrawal symptoms. And for some of us, withdrawal symptoms can be incredibly dangerous. So I recommend if you are an alcoholic right now, you don't just go completely cold turkey. You contact a, pre a professional first and talk to them. This is the aspect of Western medicine. This is the aspect of the hospitals and report and um, um, support groups within hospitals, you name it, um, that I actually enjoy. There's great things that have been done with Western medicine. There's medications that can keep people alive. 
A lot of people get really interested in the naturalism stuff and they completely shun Western medicine. But Western medicine could be a good thing if naturalism in Western medicine blended in kind of a shamanically scienced um, context. But I don't see that happening because a lot of Western medicine is corrupt, um, allopathic medicine, but not all of it is bad. But I really do recommend that you get on the phone, make some phone calls, talk to some professionals, go see a doctor or a, you know, again, a professional and get yourself the help that you deserve. No one deserves to be an alcoholic. It's you keeping yourself in a, in a state of, of ignorance. Um, but you know, I mean, it, here's the thing. If, if you currently smoke tobacco or use tobacco and you're an alcoholic, I recommend not even worrying about the tobacco. Don't worry about the tobacco. Just worry on, on making baby steps. Get yourself under control. Get, get alcohol under control, excuse me. Then once you get sober long enough, then approach the other things. A lot of people are overwhelmed with trying to juggle multiple addictions. And it can lead to a lot of stress, which can lead to making your addictions even worse. So learn to work in increments. Learn to be okay with working in baby steps. Look at your addictions and ask yourself, which one of these is killing me the, the, the fastest and which one is the most dangerous? You look at alcohol and you look at tobacco and alcohol, you could drink six shots of alcohol and get on the freeway and kill 40 people potentially. I'm not saying that that's the most likely outcome because it's not. You'd probably kill yourself or a few other people. But there, you know, with alcohol, compared to, to cigarettes or compared to tobacco, their alcohol will kill you quicker, in my opinion. Um, not necessarily quicker. How would I say this? It has the potential to kill you quicker. No, I've never heard of someone smoking three cigarettes and getting behind the wheel and, and like killing someone because they had smoked three cigarettes. No, that's the difference. Alcohol is an intoxicant. It is a, um, it aberrates the normal function, functionability of the senses. It delays your reaction time. It oftentimes will make you see double because it makes your eyes cross when you're drunk. Your, your reaction time is greatly hindered. Uh, you know, in alcohol up is down, down is up. So Anyways, I'm going to wrap this one up. On behalf of the Sacred Starseed Serpent Uraeus YouTube channel, thank you for watching this video. I hope that my videos, my messages, and my channel, my passion, etc. can help inspire you to do something positive today for your health. Whether that be getting a water filter, starting to take the herbs, rebuilding your liver if you're an alcoholic in recovery, taking baby steps with your health, getting your addictions under control. I hope that my message, in, I hope this message in general can help inspire you if you're an alcoholic or if you currently drink and drive to rethink your fucking course in life and change your destiny. You don't have to drink. You don't have to drink. Think. No one's holding a gun to your head and making you drink alcohol. No. The money that you will save by ending your addiction will lead to a lot of financial increase. Especially if you're one of these alcoholics who drinks like all these expensive beers, like, I mean, come on, $14 for a 12 pack or a six pack. I've seen six packs for like 12 bucks. You know what you could do with 12 bucks? With 12 bucks, you could buy yourself about nine gallons of distilled water from the store, even though I don't recommend doing that. It's better than alcohol. Uh, Store-bought distilled water is nowhere near as healthy as home-generated distilled water, but for an alcoholic, that's a good start. Nine gallons of distilled water. You could have nine gallons of water instead of not even a half gallon of beer. What else could you do with uh, you know that $12? You could buy yourself a box of Ron Tea Gardens Spring Dragon Longevity Tea and start rebuilding your liver. with the cisandra, with the astragalus, with the lyceum, also known as wolfberry or goji berry, with the gynostemma in that tea, you could start rebuilding your liver. You could start rebuilding that which you've destroyed. You could buy yourself uh, a fourth of a pound of Kishu Bincho Tan charcoal if you saved up two more bucks. For $14, a fourth of a pound, you could start filtering your water. You could buy yourself an enema bag. Imagine that. 
you could buy yourself an entire pound of, of red rooibos African tea to start flooding your body with antioxidants, to start giving your body that which it needs to rebuild itself. You could buy yourself multiple packs of seedlings and start growing your own garden. You could buy seeds like alfalfa seeds, bro broccoli seeds, radish seeds, fenugreek, red clover. You could start your own sprout garden in indoors. But no, you had to buy that booze because you just can't say no because you're under the spell of alcoholism. It may sound crazy, but I do believe that there is some type of nefarious um, sorcery being used in relation to all this alcoholism stuff. That's why it's on every street corner. That's why it's perpetuated and advocated in movies. And it's just everywhere, man. If you go and see a new comedy movie, that's, that's these new comedy movies that are coming out, they just go out of their way to make the loser look like, like what, it, what you're supposed to be. Everyone loves the loser. Everyone loves the drunk or the dude that puffs a ton of weed, man. But then these these well-meaning pawns out here who love this entertainment shit, they try to duplicate that in their life because that's what they see on the TV. And it leads to nowhere in their life. You're being played with. Your genetics are being played with. Your consciousness, your mind, and your spiritual freedom, which is far from being intact. We have lost our ether connection here in this matrix. We've been slammed down into this dirty, dirty world amongst the beauty of nature. The matrix has erected its thousand-headed hydra octopus tentacles everywhere and just put all these fake education systems everywhere, all these bogus supermarkets, all this dead food. There's a lot of things going on in this world that would make the average person's head spin if they knew what was going on behind closed doors. A lot of this stuff that's advertised as being so easy, or excuse me, a lot of this stuff that's being advertised as being non-threatening and cute is actually a system to lure you in so that it can have its way with you. It's like a ferocious tiger that hasn't eaten in three days disguised as a bunny rabbit. Or disguised as a, uh, you know, just like this innocent creature. I'm not saying that tigers are, are bad. I love tigers. But for uh, demonstrative purposes, for an example. Peace be with you all.